Hey guys, I'm just another engineer, and welcome back to some more Turbo Snail Construction. So, this episode, I'm doing it in a voiceover style because I have a brand new microphone and it picks up my keyboard. So, I figured this way it would be a bit more uh, user friendly, as it were. So, this episode, we are doing our first few op codes. So, we're doing load A to D, save A to D. Uh, no op and terminate. So let's go ahead and see what we're doing. So the first order of business here is to get some switches down so I can simulate an input from the instruction register just so I can figure out which part of the demultiplexer is activated for which code. Now here I'm just thinking about what to do because it's been a while since I've done this. Uh, so this is an AND gate to be able to figure out which step we're on and which uh, ops code has been specified. I'm just getting a button here to be able to increment the uh, step counter, despite the fact that I never actually use this. So then what we do is we connect up that AND gate to all of the bits of the control word that we need it to be activated in. And then here's where I realized that I actually didn't finish the control word. So all I'm doing is wiring up the inputs from the, uh, the clock pulse into all of the AND gates that control whether or not it actually lets a signal through, and then I'm just inverting the colors here because for some reason, when I first painted it on, I did it the opposite way of what I normally would think it was. So here what I'm doing is I'm taking it into the RAM out, into the register A in, and then later I'll do it into the, um, what is it, the, ops, or the, the instruction register memory out so that it can send the address to the RAM to tell it which address to access. And here I'm just doing it for A, B, C, and D, just all of them at once. And then this second gate up here on the top, that's for um, terminating it or going to the next instruction. And I'll wire those up later. Uh, because this was like the first time I did this in a long time, my brain is just all over the place, so I'm doing this way out of order. So right now I'm connecting up all the uh, the ops code demultiplexer outputs up to them, and then I connect that up to the uh, the increment step counter. Now what I'm doing here is connecting up the in for the A, B, C, and D registers, or just for the B, C, and D registers. Uh, and then this is where I remember that I need to output the address from the instruction register. And then here, I'm not exactly sure what I'm doing. Yeah, I'm just checking to make sure that that's actually what I think it is. And turn off those switches. And then here we are actually debugging the first thing because of course the first thing never actually works properly. So here I'm just verifying that the ops codes actually work the way that I think they do. So it's on the most significant side. So here I'm just putting down some markers to be able to tell exactly where I would actually put all the inputs. Just painting those on, so that's a bit easier to program. Now in the future I'll have something like a keyboard to be able to easily program these things. Uh, so I'm telling it to load A from memory address 8, and then at memory address 8 I set in that pattern, I guess. And then here I'm setting up some lights because there's a bit of a flaw with these uh, registers. You can't actually see what's in them without special aids. So there I connect up some lights and run the clock and it doesn't work. There are many reasons why it doesn't work. The first reason why it doesn't work is because I actually specified the wrong ops code. That ops code uh, doesn't exist because I forgot to shift it over to the most significant side. So here I'm trying it again, and it doesn't load. It'll take me a while to figure out this one. Just running around trying to figure out what the heck's going on. This is debugging for you. It takes a while to run around, and then as soon as you find the thing, which I find right here, it doesn't actually have an input from the clock. You think it's so darn obvious. There you go, and there's one more bug ironed out. So now the control word is actually getting an input from the clock, but there's another flaw. Once I find it here, come on. Yep, that's intact. 
It's actually getting sent, but it's not getting an input from the control word because I forgot to send the actual signal from the control word to the read in RAM. So I can find it. Come on. There it is. Yep, it's not connected. So I just put a marker so I can actually see it and take the wire, connect it up, remove the post, and run. Now it's actually loading something, but it's loading the wrong things because the timing's off. So now, I'll go over here, and then this is why all the timers are in those places, so I can change the duration of all the pulses. I changed the wrong one there, so I need to get register A in, which is 110, change that, and... It works! There we go. Off camera I changed the delay a bit. And now we're on to no op. So this is a pretty simple one. It's basically just a bit of a delay. So it just increments it after a while. That was a pretty easy one. Next up we are doing save A and D. So I'm adding in a second row here and it's basically the exact same thing, just backwards. Instead of RAM in, or uh, instead of RAM out, it's RAM in, and here I'm changing up the names because I made this back when I didn't really know how these things worked. So now it's basically the opposite thing. The only uh, similar thing, or the only same thing, is that the uh, instruction register outputs its uh, the, the, the address to RAM, but instead it's RAM in and register out. There, I'm just looking up all the codes, connecting everything up. So that was RAM re or RAM write. So now I'm connecting up to register A, B, C, and D out for each one respectively. I get confused about which one's which. There. And then here my computer froze for a good minute. Remember, this is in three times speed. Just look at that. Yeah, I don't know what happened there. Everything just froze. So now I'm connecting that up to the, uh, the, the, the end command. So now I'm debugging it, just reset the RAM, go up here to look for the ops codes, this will come naturally later, I'm telling it to read from memory address 8, I'm telling it to write from, uh, from address, or uh, from register A into address 9. So now I'm just reading it to double check and make sure that I did it right. Reset everything. Tell it to go, and double check, and it works, yay. So next up, we have the terminate program. Put down another gate, it's basically the exact same thing, but instead we are going to the red gates on the clock to be able to stop it. And this one should be pretty easy. I just wanted to do something more than just terminate, so I got load A and then save A, and then after that terminate, and I don't know what I did there, uh, apparently I messed up the code. Yeah, it's really annoying to have to manually program stuff like this, but in the future we'll get a nice keyboard. And then here, just to make a random message, I just shot it with a spudling gun, because why not? And there, save it, and then run the program, and it doesn't work. Guess why? I forgot to turn off the switches. Here we go, and again, didn't work. I don't know why it didn't work. Oh right, somehow the very first line got erased. I don't know how that happened, but I'm just reprogramming it there. Now it actually works, saves, and the clock stops. And then everything's lined up. So that's just about it for this episode. A little bit shorter, but faster paced. So let me know if you like this sort of voiceover style. I know it's going to have to be the solution for now because, again, keyboard makes a lot of noise. But for the most part, yeah, that's it. Next episode, we'll be working on some more ops codes and some more fancy items. Um, I know we have to get JVP integrated, integrated which... Uh, the networking protocol that me and Vilgut have been working on a while back. Um, I'll try and get another uh, not a dev log up to show you guys the progress of the game. And yeah, that's about it. Life is normal. So I'll see you guys in the next episode. Goodbye.